generic greetings and welcome back once again to Airships Conquer the Skies. Today's beverage is a nice and refreshing and indeed cold raspberry and lime juice drink because it's warm at the moment so some ice is indeed warranted. Anyway, I digress. In the previous series of Airships, we did a mini-series on the Conquest mode and the whole purpose of that was to use a lot of the designs that we've made in these standalone episodes and use them in anger in a Conquest situation and they were always intended to be used that way. We knew there was certain limitations when we made them and overall it was quite a success. We did manage to win the campaign. We did lose a couple of missions but overall Overall, it was a fairly successful run. We did find a lot of things out about the designs, mainly when not to use them and what to change and that sort of thing. So overall, really, really happy. We're going to go back to building in these mini-series or this um, standalone episode, should I say, and I'm going to attempt the impossible, and that is to make a cost-effective and useful carrier. I think I'm going to fail drastically at this because I'm not particularly uh, I'm not particularly convinced that there is a balance in planes, but we'll have to see how this one goes. Either way, let's go over to design and fight and then to airship because we are obviously going to run as an airship. Now, a couple of things before we crack on into this. The thing has to be as cheap as possible with as many planes as possible. I'm aiming for around about the sort of maybe one and a half to two thousand ish cost. And the reason that I'm doing this is because as of late, I've been reading an RPG called Warbirds, which is a diesel punk alternate history um, role playing game where you play pilots that work for this guild. It's sort of Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow, a bit of Crimson Skies in there, and all of that sort of thing. It actually has a lot of similarities with airships. It has things called Floatstone instead of Suspendium, where islands are floating, and that sort of thing. You can see very much the the, um, the similarities between the two things. Either way, it got me in the mood to make like a drop carrier of some kind, which is a unarmed, lightly armoured. Uh, relatively fast, but not in any great, um, I guess comparatively it would be uh, quite slow, but either way, it's something that was very light and very cheap in order to carry some planes, and that's what we're going to do. So in terms of planes, we've got many options. We have biplane, bomber, torpedo bomber, and triplane. Four options in total, followed by the hazard bays. We also, if we really wanted to, we could go with troops and have the suspendium backpacks, because they're also sort of related they are airborne airborne troops essentially so looking at the sort of things we can get biplanes bombers torpedo bombers triplanes so we're going to go with biplane 175 it houses a single biplane are fast and exceptionally good at shooting down other small flying units so realistically we want at minimum of one so we're going to put one on there triplanes on the other hand so it has a single triplane very fast flying units effective against lightly armored targets so they are mm, possible to, it's possible to shoot other aircraft, but they are mainly there to shoot sort of wooden structures. So we're probably going to have a couple of those. Actually, so we'll have uh, probably two biplanes, two triplanes, and then finally we have bombers and torpedo bombers. Now they are the same cost. So the first one just says, how's a single bomber aircraft? And the other one says, uh, light plane that launches a single aerial torpedo to its point before returning to rearm. HP 200, whereas the bomber has 400. We're going to go with the bomber, which is 1 and then 2. And we can see that we have a row there. Now, you may be thinking, hang on, have we made this before? Sort of. Let me go to open design, and we're going to go down, and we can see that we have many different designs, but what I'm looking for is the carrier, which might be the Zeppington. Ah, there we go, the Necrosis. So that is very expensive, 5,275, too expensive. We're on at the moment with our just row of planes, 1,050. So it's like we've done previously and done an iteration of a design. That thing, however, is armed with looks to be two biplanes and two torpedo bombers. No, one, two. One, two, three, four, five torpedo bombers. So we went with five torpedo bombers. Well, we don't care about that. We just want an all-purpose carrier that carries some planes, like this, to a target. So that is tentatively our loadout. Let's go next to... I was going to go structural, but we're going to go with lift. What is the cheapest thing that will give us lift? Well, suspendium dust tank is cheap. Um, which also is quite decent. The large suspendium dust tank gives us a very high service ceiling of 226 meters. The problem with that is as soon as we start clamping modules on this, 
it's going to be a bit different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Suspendium Dust Tanks and I'm going to put them probably... The problem with aircraft is that they have to be mounted like that. I, would, I did look for some mods to uh, get different aircraft. So aircraft that could say hang underneath or aircraft that are launched in different ways. And there's several mods out there. Most of them are depreciated. Most of them haven't been updated in quite some time. And the other aircraft mods that I could find were more of the same. So uh, more, more aircraft but not a different way of launching which is a shame. If you know of a mod that alters that then by all means let me know. Anyway. I digress. So we want to go with probably, see they can walk across there so that's fine. Let me go to overlays and a path, yes they can path across the top there. So we could if we wanted to have just a row of these uh, suspendium gas bags like that which is probably what we're going to do. I'm tempted to have a sort of section back here and a section back there like sort of gondolas holding this thing up and that is not unreasonable although I would also like to do I was thinking of making something like this. So we'd have one there and tentatively one there and then one there and then one there. Something like that and that will give us like a sort of a structure where we can just have connected struts going up and then you've got these two um, let's say uh, gondolas hanging down that keep the thing aloft which I think is a fairly cool idea uh, but let's just see about moving that back to there moving that back to there we're gonna go over to our struts and then to a standard strut which will run straight up to the second center and then straight up to the center and that keeps it aloft for the time being 334 meters Okay, not too bad. We need supply, we need guns, we need that sort of thing. Actually, weapons-wise, we're probably not going to have anything more than a rifle just to give us that uh, not being out of the fight type of affair. So, let's go ahead. No propulsion, no crew, blah, blah, blah. Let's try propulsion first. So propulsion, we've got a small propeller, which we could easily put on the back there like so, if we so desired. Um, this is, as I said, supposed to be a cheap unarmed carrier. I couldn't care really much about service ceiling or really speed is not really a big concern. Um, a sail is also possible. We could go with a sail on the back but the problem with sails is although they are cheap they're also I believe quite expensive. 160 for that whereas the standard propeller comes in at 25 and the large propeller comes in at 80 so is that right uh, the weight is 80 whereas the large sail is 240 so yes pound for pound they are not that great there uh, we can't oh you can actually put them under the I could put sails there if I really wanted to but the weight is just to be honest the weight is something I don't care about now that I think of it 334 meters this thing's gonna be right at the back um, lower anyway so we could go with an engine pod on there. Engine pods look cool. If you zoom in you can see there's a lot more detail in engine pods than there used to be. The problem with that is that it requires coal. It also tends to snap off at the drop of a hat and it's also quite expensive. So the question is do I need do I need anything other than a sail? We've got a large sail and a regular sail. Um, could go for a large sail there and a large sail there. That will give us 258. Ah, 158 kilometers an hour. Um, you can't ac you can't access these modules though. We'd have to put struts that go underneath there. And I was trying to avoid that sort of thing. But the thing about sailors is you can put them anywhere you like. So we could put them along the center there if we really wanted to. I don't know whether we want propellers or not. Anyway, we'll go over to Commander Crew uh, before we do anything else, really, because I still haven't decided exactly how we're going to do this. I'm trying to work out the distance between these things. Let me count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we could have the bridge there. We could have a... Uh, we don't really want. We're not going to have a crow's nest. Not that we can't actually really have one. Although I guess we could have one back there if we really wanted a crow's nest. But extra accuracy on the one rifle that we're probably going to have, almost certainly useless. Back over to structural corridor with ladder. Corridor with ladder go there. And now we have access to the top. We need. Uh, well, what do these? What do these actually require? It says. 
nothing. Right, requires two supply. Contains spot for one monocoque triplane. Slightly flammable. Just says supply. They just need supply. Okay, that's fine. So we need crew. So we'll go to command and crew. We'll have a quarters that'll be right underneath there, like so. We'll connect that up. We have no propulsion, and I need more supply hatches. So a supply hatch, we will go over to probably... Uh, well, not probably. It will go over to resources. Wooden cargo door. Current supply is 17 required. Wooden cargo door provides 40. So a standard wooden supply hatch would suffice. That one's going to go there to give us the order that we need. And a regular fire extinguisher will go there. Okay. We don't at the moment have any propulsion. But we can easily sort that by adding in a probably a 1, 2, 3 drop to there. Followed by propulsion and a large sail which can go in there. And we could always flip it and put one. Uh, no, you can't flip the sails. That's a shame. The question is, do I want a sail like that? Does it look? It doesn't really look that good, does it? That's the problem with it. That's the problem with it. Standard sail there. Insufficient crew. 12 crew, minimum crew 13. Outside view. Uh, hit points, pathetic. Water, not great. Repair tool, none. Ammunition, none. Coal, none. Explosion damage, none. Technically, I'm because of these, so we don't even need to put a weapon on it. So that's fine. Um, do I want a weapon on it, though? Do we want, say, a Gatling gun or something to take out other aircraft? No. That's a bloat of the design. We're just after a standard like carrier. In fact, it's not even a standard carrier. It's a completely stripped down one. A standard air quotes carrier would have at least some anti-air armament on it. So, I mean, could we put some on? Do we want to? What sort of things would we put on? Realistically, it would be Gatling gun. We put Gatling gun on the front. And then some ammo at the back, but a Gatling gun's 94, followed by ammo, so it's going to be another 150 to to have those on. So, is it worth it? Service ceiling is 227 metres. So, I mean, we could realistically get, two of, get rid of three of those, and it would still fly at 94 metres anywhere. There's something to be said about that. I love the look of that. I think that looks simple but effective. But, you can't get away from it. Each one of those costs 60. We can make 187. Another option. is we have an end cap there an end cap there get rid of all of these struts there we go get rid of those and that still minus nine service ceiling okay we're not going to get away with that <laughs> what about these end ones here one there and one there 22 meter service ceiling followed by those end caps okay right that works 66 meters that's more than enough to keep us aloft um not enough crew but we could go with easily rip that out command and crew berth one berth goes in there we'll rip that one out we'll put another berth in there because of the 17 as opposed to the corridor of six so actually no there's a Bit of a saving to be made there. Corridor ladder. Oh, seven. No, so it's ten more. And then we simply need one more there. Followed by propulsion. And a sail. And that is technically a legit vessel. Okay. 
1,273. I mean, it really makes me want to just put another one of them on the front. But I don't think I will. I don't think I will. What I will do is go to Solid Shapes and put a filler block in like that. And followed by the curved one there and a curved one there. And there we go. Very, very basic. Let's let's put a little bit of detail on it. A bit of let's let's you know make it a little bit less boring looking. Decoration. Couple of lights. Or the red lanterns. The red lanterns do look good. Red lantern on either side. Um one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. No. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 There you go. We could. That's the red lanterns. There's also fancy lantern, round lantern. Oh, I prefer the round ones. Oh, let's put the round ones on then. Um, so round. Yeah, let's just remove all these. I like the way they're sort of. I know they're all. I know they're all han hanging. But the round ones just a bit better. Don't know why. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. One there. One there. Two, three, four, five, six. That's cost as an additional six. <laughs> Plus, uh, uh, what's that? So it's six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four, about thirty odd for the decoration, which I think we can probably um, say that's not too much of a problem. Okay, so we now have this in here. So what are we going to call it? We normally name it after ooh, oopsie daisy, after like cities or that sort of thing. Um. Hmm, what could we call it? Okay, I've went with the Athens simply because when we go to save design and then save it there, it'll be right at the top of the list, which means we don't have to scroll. And that is literally the uh, start and end point of that thought process. Let's go to leave and we're going to go to combat and try this thing out in anger. So once again, over to the add airships and the Athens right at the top there. And we can see that the service ceiling is garbage, but indeed adequate hopefully for our needs. Overall cost is 2,059. I'm not too sure why it says that. Let me try that again. Airship Editor, Open Design, Athens, 1,309. 1,309. Cost to build this design. Yes. Leave. Combat, Airship, Athens. What? Um, does it not take into account the aircraft that are actually on the thing? I don't know. What I do know is that if I put something like the GDS turret against it, which is cheaper, it's going to lose. In fact, I'd go one further and said if we put the Dark Cube version 3 against it, it's probably still going to lose. So, let's get a apparently 2059 ship versus a 587 ship. Okay, start the fight. So, there goes the planes. One, two, three. We can see the planes and all the lights and stuff which do actually they're actually animated as well you can see the swing left and right which is what I was hoping for so we have the planes going left and right some of them have just gone back to land and we can see that already we have lost a triplane and another triplane and a lot of damage being inflicted on this bomber here the bomber itself has went back to repair but so far we've lost both of our triplanes but the biplanes have come back and are getting repaired which is good to see 
Damage is still being inflicted, and indeed damage is quite good. The bomber is dropping these bombs at a quite decent level. This thing obviously doesn't have a flak. If we did have flak, then we would have lost pretty much straight away. We can see we've taken some damage there. This is the uh, biplane that's shooting, and sadly there's another biplane that has dropped down. And yeah, so this is something that is apparently... This is apparently three times cheaper than the current recorded the current recorded plane uh, carrier cost rather but there's a big bit of damage but the build cost apparently was almost half the price as the one that it says don't know what that is going fast it's like a germ uh, hot air balloon in the back there but we can see that we've taken out the main gun on the top, the main block on the top, which was housing the rifles, which means that actually the one remaining bomber can bomb with impunity. So I max speed it out, we can see it's going to go back to here, it's going to stand there and repair. You can see we have got uh, 15 out of 21 crew there and they are slowly repairing that and then that's now being launched again. We go over to the right hand side we can see that the bombing is underway and we are actually going to win the fight it's a bit of a surprise mainly because of the cost that it, it just associated uh, with that there why why on earth it is more expensive i do not know i don't know whether that's a bug i don't know whether the cost of these is not fact in all i know is that what it tells us on the build thing is not the same as what it's telling us to deploy it so that's interesting. Um, I don't know what that is, why that is. Either way, we're going to try it again. So I don't know whether to go off this value or the build value. I'm tempted to go off the build value. Mainly because that was the original one we were aiming for. And also because, quite frankly, airplanes aren't that powerful. And I think we need all the advantages we can get. So yeah, even then, it's still going to be problematic. I just think they're, they're a bit too expensive for how ineffective they are. I think there is a couple of mods actually you can get that um, ch uh, change the price of that one. Uh, yeah, they change the price of it to um, reflect that. Anyway, we're going to put it up against something that it realistically would be able to go against. So let's have a scroll down. We've got the Rock Tosser, which is not a terrible one. It's a little bit more expensive than we uh, really should it again so the unassailable is actually something that we would probably fare quite well against it has a suspendium uh, sorry a moon disc fragment in the center there um let's go with probably the basic now the basic is 1320 and i reckon it's going to absolutely annihilate our planes because although it's not got a great amount of things on the front that can hit it all the rifles on the back will be able to so let's start the fight and we'll see what happens there so there's the planes taking off we don't have any control over that and we can see that they are going past they're doing a strafing run and they're getting hit on the way past and you can see that we are obviously getting hit as well and i'm going to tell this to move so the carrier is closer to um the planes that are doing all of the damage however as you can see even though the planes are coming into land and we do still have a couple of planes there nope we've lost one bomber two of our well both of our triplanes and the biplanes sadly as you can see are getting repaired so this is going to be a straight up loss without any shadow of a doubt okay not going to continue that fight no point leave that back to combat we're going to go to a dawn fight no day fight add the airship we're going to add the athens and we'll place it in here and then what we're going to do add airship we're going to put it against where is it dresden high level decent armored very well armored and armed bomber so this is something that we can fight because it's got nothing that there's basically nothing on it it's going for a ram we're gonna have to move quickly uh, there's nothing on it that can take our planes out so all we have to do is outmaneuver it now the problem with that is well as you can clearly see it's not built for maneuvering however the damage that we're causing to it because they can't shoot our planes down is immense we have our bombers which are hitting it at a nice high level we're going to keep running there we do still have our motive and propulsion system so that's fine they have lost a suspendium chamber don't know if you can see that there is a suspendium chamber and it's not 
activated. It's completely destroyed by the look of it. So we do have a couple more. There's a couple of secondary suspendium chambers in there, and sadly for them, it has just exploded. Which means that, oh, their back end of the ship has just fallen off too, so they now have no motive. So, that's a win. So there's a... There is a definite example of the sort of things this can burst and come out very well on top. We did suffer damage in that initial run. In fact, we've lost the front two landing strips for the biplanes. But you can see that there's almost nothing left of that ship. Okay. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. They do have the place. Let's go and fight it. Rain. Airship. Athens. Athens can go back here. Airship. Coventry. I think. Start the fight. There's the rockets coming towards us. And there's the shooting away for our planes. It takes a little while to get them launched. But there you are. Now we're going to come down a little bit here. Because I want to be able to go underneath them. We've got a bridge, so we can command quite quickly, so this is good. The problem with this ship is it's a very scattershot approach. It just fires these rockets, and as you can see, it does a lot of damage. We've taken hits on, sadly, too much, and we've lost one of these suspended tanks, and also, indeed, ooh, good grief, uh, a big chunk of this thing. In fact, this is split in half. We've actually split this thing in half. We've lost loads of stuff now, and that's no longer under command. But at the same time, our planes are still in existence. So another example of where planes can be effective. They are no longer capable of moving. They've lost all of their propulsion systems and all of their suspendium. And all of our planes are still in the fight. That is technically a defeat because we uh, haven't... Hang on. Athens survived. But it's a defeat because they're a mobile. I don't agree. Uh, we would win that if we could have continued on. Okay, let's try it again. Athens, back over here. So what I'm thinking immediately is we redo this and have it a little bit quicker and maybe a bit higher service ceiling. Maybe increasing the cost by a couple of hundred isn't a bad thing. Having a very high service ceiling, or at least a higher service ceiling that we've got now, may bring it out of range of some of the things that it would face. Certainly out of the way of things like the Dresden or any of those sort of ships. Let's go with a airship. Actually, let's go with a land ship. Um, we got the bomber tank. No. Actually, I mean, putting it against something like that would be interesting. Let this. So this is a ground carrier. So it's something that we have tried before. Um, we'll place it in there, like so. And this is a similar thing where we wanted to make something that was very, very cheap. Um, the difference is it is simply bombers. And it's got nothing else. It's not armed with anything else. So you can see, it's, they're not even off the runway. And our planes are already shooting them down. The problem is they've let some of them go. And now we are going to be bombed from the sky by their bombers. Oh, looks like we have shot them down. There's another one going down. And although we've taken a hit to the front suspendium cone, we have destroyed all of their aircraft. So we now have air superiority, which basically means that this is another win. So it seems that it's a bit like boarding in a way. If there's... <laughs> I like the... <laughs> it's running for its life, isn't it? And I love the speed and the <laughs> and the ramp. It's actually jumping really far. Aww. <laughs> I love the speed of that. It was just ramping over everything. Um, yes, as I was saying, it's a bit like boarding in a way, in that it's it's another facet. It's another it's another extra thing you can do. So, you know, you've got you stand up, just shoot each other. You've got boarding and you've got planes. That if you don't have a particular counter for it, then that's gonna that's gonna really hinder you. So if you have a couple of rifles, then you don't have to worry about planes. If you don't have anything, there's literally nothing you can do. Whereas a standard fight, you know, fight one versus the other, cannon v cannon or weapon v weapon, you can generally maneuver around it. There's lots of options, but it's a bit more binary when you just don't have anywhere to to deal with them. Let's have another Athens. Place that on there. Airship, and let's try. Let's try something like the New York. 
So we're going to place it fairly far back because it's got these two suspendium things. We're obviously going to have to add airships ourselves. So we're going to go for the original points cost. So that would be uh, 1,300 uh, each. So one, two, three, uh, four, five, 1,200. So we're actually, uh, hang on, one, two, three, four for 5,200, so we're still a bit underpointed if we're going off the build cost from the... Yeah, if we're going off the build cost from the editor rather than this. But there's the planes out. Lots of planes, in fact. As you can see, we have all of these little aerial hussars. All of them are now dead. They've been absolutely destroyed. So, oh, en masse, we have these bombers, followed by the triplanes and the biplanes. So we established air superiority. The only thing this has against our planes uh, was who the area was at. But the damage inflicted is immense. They've lost the front end, no longer under command, lost a huge suspendium chamber, and that's a very easy victory. Okay. So I still don't know which is the correct cost. Let's put it against a Denver. Two Denvers. These are boarding. So this will be an interesting fight. They will win because they can very easily board us. But there you go. As soon as they were able to issue commands, they're just coming straight towards us. They're going to stop there. They're then going to start to board. They basically have already won. However, what damage can we inflict with these planes. We've been captured, no longer under control, but you can see the damage is quite severe. Not that it matters because we've lost our only ship. So we expected that. Back over to airships then, we'll give it probably one or two more. One more airship against the hull, which is these suspendium, oh sorry, aerial charges. The Oxford. A couple of Oxfords might be alright. One, two. Huh. Already overpointed. You know what? That's apparently close to close to that point value. Start the fight. Move it forward. There's no reason for us not to move forward. Because we just have planes. Are they gonna ram? They're not gonna ram. But there's some good there's some good attacks. Good attacks. Lots of damage being inflicted on this Oxford. The problem is that if it keeps doing that, it's going to land on top of us when it loses its suspendium chamber. And I think that's its uh, desire, quite frankly. <laughs> We're no longer under command. We've lost the bridge. And sadly, damage is fairly poor on the Oxfords at the moment. Initial damage output was very good. Not so much because we haven't had a bomb in. There's a bomb coming in, but you can see they're, they're just they're not they're not dropping them at the right time. They're dropping them on the pass. Damage is still being inflicted quite a bit. There we go. There's one Oxford down. Suspendium chamber gone, propulsion gone, weapon gone. So it's just the other one to deal with. And you can see that the damage from the triplanes is actually the real cause of damage at the moment. Until these bombs start to get in. But, remember, we're versing this fight cost rather than the build cost. Because there's a discrepancy there, and I don't know why. But it might be another win. Okay, I'm seeing some future for this. It works. I've always thought of planes as fairly garbage, and I still hold to that. <laughs> but, this has changed things somewhat. I, I now think that... Instead of being a curiosity and something fairly cool, they now actually can serve as a, a realistic use for things. They always had a use for things, but they always died too quickly. Um, the issue still remains that if you field this and you want to wait for, say, an initial couple of volleys to take off the flak and then launch them, you can't. If you could t like tell them when to launch instead of them launching automatically, that would be much better. But when fielded correctly, I guess with anything, these are actually quite effective. Do we want to put it up against Excalibur? 
Might as well. Might as well. Let's go off the reported cost of the build. Um, let's go off what it says here. Up here. Um, the problem with that is, I don't know if you can see, we're running out of room. <laughs> if we went off the build cost, we wouldn't have any room at all. Uh, 16,472, 16,569. So that's not too bad. We'll put it further back because it is a carrier itself. Start the fight. And there is the launch. And immediately, they've pretty much lost all of their aircraft. Apart from the bombers that have not yet launched. There are our bombers going over the flak on the top there. And it's been prioritised. They've got no flak. They've also lost the the machine guns that they have around here. There's still a couple in play. Flamethrowers are doing just that. They're shooting these planes as they go past. But we are chipping away at the centre where the ground keel is. And the main central section is being absolutely hammered to pieces. They have lost loads of suspension chambers. They've almost lost the full front of the ship, which is about to any second split away from the main substructure. Uh, superstructure, rather. I would not have expected that. And we went off the the cost of what it is to deploy them rather than the build cost, whichever is better. So we've taken the worst possible outcome and ran with it. And we can see that it had no chance. As soon as they lost the ability to take these planes out en masse. So as soon as they lost their own planes, as soon as they lost the flak on the top of that, and as soon as the Gatling guns here went, there's nothing they can do. They have to destroy us. Now, they have the capability, and indeed, as you can see, they have taken out a fair number of these Athens. But these are multiple ships. And we're able to absolutely bombard them here with impunity. There goes the main drive module on the back and now we're just taking out the tower block from the top down basically all the bombers in play all of the what have we got? do we have any triplanes we have biplanes left and we have some triplanes as well i think yeah we do so we've got pretty much pretty much everything not everything we started with but we've got a nice amount of stuff they're all going back to base, and that's a victory. And that is the Athens Carrier. That was a lot more effective than I thought it would be. Um, I didn't expect it to be as effective. Now, we've seen what happens when you put it up against static structures that can uh, are very, very cheap. Um, so I wouldn't use that. I would actually use it in a fleet roll. I, would, I wouldn't use it for an assault roll, unless we were you know, well over point and we have loads of, loads of money. Um, but cost for cost, pound for pound... There's a lot of things that it can deal with. Obviously, the heavier than air aircraft, the planes, they can get up to whatever place they need to be and take out the high-level bombers, anything like that. Anything quite long range, they can get up to very quickly. So it really is very much dependent on what the opponent has. There's some things that we've got that we really don't care what they're armed with. The Denver's uh, the classic example. Doesn't matter what you are, they're going to charge towards you and board you. The only thing that can stop it is if they outmaneuver you. They are too high service sailing, which is not realistic because we've got quite a high service sailing on them anyway. Or if we um, just get outboarded. So the thing we're trying to board has a lot more defences, which is, again, not likely. Either way, that fared a lot better than I thought it did. And I'm excited to try that again and maybe even iterate and make a bigger one. And maybe have a highest, maybe a version 2 is in order, maybe a slightly higher service ceiling, slightly faster so we can avoid the things coming towards. Because there was a couple of fights there, especially with the with the Oxfords and the Dresden that we couldn't outmaneuver it, and the Coventry to some extent as well. Um, if we were able to outmaneuver it, we would have fared it slightly better. Same goes for the height advantage, if we had a higher service ceiling, may have, may have been okay. And also, maybe even maybe weaponize it maybe put one or two guns on it but then again this is all 
all what we'd done previously and made a lot of a you know, scope creep and bloated and overpointed. So maybe starting at the basics and working up is better than the other way around. Either way, if you have any suggestions for changes, then by all means let us know in the comments. Same for designs, anything you've got to see. If you want to see more, then by all means let us know. Thanks very much for watching. Take care and generic partings.